Good evening and welcome to the evening news for today, Thursday, October the 26th, 2023. I'm Gerald Bryan. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's take a look at some of the lead stories tonight. Local oil industry to be further accelerated as government awards new oil blocks. Ghana makes 46 oil discovery offshore at Lancet Fish 2 well. Fortinet seeking to close scale gaps in local cybersecurity industry. Mastermind, three others remain in custody over murder of businessman's son. And Venezuela's actions, an irrefutable violation of Guyana's territorial rights, OAS. Now for the news in detail. Guyana's oil industry is poised for further expansion following government's award of seven new oil blocks offshore. In our lead story tonight, Vanu Manik Chan reports that among the new oil explorers is a local firm owned by four Guyanese women. Vice President Dr. Bar Jack Dio on Thursday announced the award of seven new oil blocks offshore Guyana. CISPRO Inc., a Guyanese company owned by four women, has received a shallow and deep water block. Other shallow blocks were awarded to Total Energy's EP Guyana BV, Qatar Energy International ENP LLC, Petronas ENP Overseas Ventures SDN BHD Malaysia, International Group Investment Inc. of Nigeria, and Liberty Petroleum Corporation of the U.S. and Ghana based Cyberly Energy Limited. A shallow block was also awarded to the Stabrook Block Partners, ExxonMobil, Hess Corporation. Corporation and CNOC. Meanwhile, the second deepwater block was awarded to Delcorp Inc. Guyana, which comprises Watad Energy and Communications Limited and Arabian Drillers of Saudi Arabia. Now that the blocks have been awarded, the Vice President said Guyana would be moving to start negotiations with these companies. We now have to meet with the interested or the parties to which the blocks have been awarded to have a negotiation um, on the, the contracting. That is, to, to move towards the completion of the award. But I don't want to put pressure on our people too, because um, a, a, an artificial timeline, they need to do proper due diligence. They may need to make sure that the government's interests are taken care of. And so our lawyers and others would be addre addressing this, but now the awards are out, so people know. So I, I, um, or they would probably invite them in for negotiations beginning next week. Last week, ExxonMobil said it would not sign the new production sharing agreement, citing concerns with some of the fiscal terms and conditions. But government has already insisted it would not weaken these new features to suit the U.S. oil major, a position Jack Deere reiterated during Thursday's press conference. We may have a situation where we may not be able to finalize with everyone, because as you heard, ExxonMobil said they're not prepared to sign if the PSA as is currently structured, it's too stringent, and we have all, you have heard our public position on that. If their demands are, are extreme, then we will simply not proceed with the sign. If there is a, a second bidder there, yes, I think we can, we can then move to the other bidder. At the conclusion of the bid round in the auction last month, government had received a total of 14 offers by six bidders for eight of the 14 oil blocks offshore Guyana. Of the 14 offers received, three were for deep sea areas and the other 11 were for shallow areas. Reporting for the Evening News, Vanu Manik Chand. The Sabrook Block Reservoir continues to deliver more oil as yet another discovery has been made offshore Guyana at the Lancet Fish 2 well. This latest oil find has taken the country's total discovery since 2015 up to 46. Here is Vanu Manikchan again with the details. 
In its third quarter earnings statement on Wednesday, Hess Corporation announced that the Lancet Fish 2 appraisal well in the Stabrook block has resulted in significant discovery. According to Hess Corporation, the well encountered approximately 125 feet of net oil pay in appraisal reservoirs and approximately 65 feet of net oil pay in a new discovery interval. The Lancet Fish 2 well was drilled in 5,649 feet of water and is located approximately 4 miles southeast of the Lancet Fish 1 discovery well where oil was found in April this year. The Guyana government has welcomed this latest oil find, noting that it is the fourth offshore discovery for 2023 and brings the total number of discoveries from 2015 to date up to 46. The Lancet Fish 2 discovery in the Lisa Petroleum Production License area has unveiled an estimated 20 meters of hydrocarbon bearing reservoir along with approximately 81 meters of additional hydrocarbon bearing sandstone. According to the Natural Resources Ministry, this newly discovered reservoir will undergo a comprehensive appraisal process which aligns with the ongoing appraisal activities for other discoveries in the region. Hess Corporation currently holds a 30% interest in the Stabrook block which is operated by ExxonMobil with a 45% interest while CNOC holds the remaining 25% stake. Only earlier this week it was announced that Hess has entered into an agreement to merge with Chevron and this transaction is expected expected to be closed in the first half of 2024. Experts have already commented that Chevron's deep pockets could see more adventurous drilling in the Stabrook block when it takes over Hess's Guyana operations. Reporting for the Evening News, Fanu Manikchand. A shortage of petrol continues to affect vehicle operators and other persons in Region 6, East Burby's quarantine. Andrew Carmichael joins us now to report that with limited supply in the country, the price at the pump has since increased. In Region 6, East Burby's quarantine, it has been more than a week that vehicle operators especially have been finding it difficult to locate a service station which has fuel for sale. The state-owned Guy Oil has been supplying fuel to its two company-operated outlets in the region, ensuring that they are stocked. These are at Palmario and Heatburn. However, the private service stations have been receiving very small amounts of fuel from their respective suppliers and not on a regular basis. On Wednesday, a few gas stations in the region had fuel for sale, but within hours, it was depleted. I pass going past in Chukobok Street and there is no gas. Looking for gas all over and the gas, the car break down Chukobok Street. Now what a Run out of gas. Run out of gas. Then I had to come with a buckle, get some gas, put it in the car and then come back and put a little more gas there's no gas no rain um, new amsterdam last week region 6 chairman david armagon in an invited comment explained that the main supplier guy oil informed him that the company had encountered problems with its fuel boat to burpees armagon said gasoline was being trucked to burpees from the capital city georgetown and since the fuel company only had two trucks in the region it was only a limited amount that was being made available to the region on a daily basis Sol has also been trucking fuel to outlets in the region that sell that brand of gas. One Sol gas station operator explained that the supply is limited and noted that the fuel which arrived on Tuesday last week was ordered last week. The operator explained that now he only receives a limited amount which might supply customers for a two-day period and then he has to wait until more supplies come again. The evening news was told that a limited supply is due to the fact that the Burbies River Bridge was reduced the tonnage being allowed to cross. The Burbies River Bridge on October 14 issued a release stating that the previous day a barge loaded with sand collided with the bridge. As a result, all trucks, tractors and freight vehicles would only be able to cross the bridge with a maximum weight limit of 20 tons. A sole gas distributor explained to this newscast that the restrictions mean that a truck can only bring about half of its capacity. The same factors are affecting Guy Oil, which only has two trucks to service the entire Region 6. Efforts to contact Guy Oil for a comment on the situation proved futile. For Evening News, Andrew Carmichael.
With businesses hopping into the age of digital transformation and incorporating technology into their daily operations, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips today drew attention to the equally dangerous matter of cyber attacks. Rupa Sinarain reports. In observance of Cybersecurity Month, the Ghana Manufacturing and Services Association, in collaboration with the Private Sector Commission and the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce, hosted a technology conference at the Pegasus Corporate Center on Thursday. In light of the new development wave in Guyana, businesses are utilizing innovation to remain competitive and relevant. Addressing the forum, Prime Minister Mark Phillips highlighted, therefore, that proactive measures must be taken to safeguard digital assets. With this increase in connectivity, access to information, and endless opportunities for digital innovation, it is crucial to implement robust cybersecurity measures to protect data, maintain operational integrity, and ensure the safety and privacy of individuals and organizations in this new era of technological innovation. We must remain vigilant, continuously evaluating and identifying potential vulnerabilities in our information systems while guarding against evolving cyber threats that could negatively impact our quality of life. I urge once again that we remember that cybersecurity is a shared responsibility where every citizen, business, and government agency takes proactive measures to enhance online security. Phillips asserted government's unwavering commitment to ensuring efficient cybersecurity measures are put in place for the safety and security of all Guyanese. He said government is taking cybersecurity seriously with the enactment of transformative legislation such as the Data Protection Act and the Digital Identity Card Act. I wish the force on the score that the digital transformation brought on by Industry 4.0 should be accompanied by a solid commitment to cybersecurity. Industry 4.0 is such that with the proliferation of interconnected systems, the attack surface for cyber threats expands. Therefore, each connected device and system becomes a potential entry point for cyber attacks. The PM also underscored that data privacy is essential as breaches can have legal and financial repercussions. Compliance with data protection regulations also becomes critical. Rupa Sinarain, The Evening News. The Civil Defense Commission, CDC's ability to respond to the El Nino weather condition currently being experienced in Guyana has been boosted with support from China to the tune of $20 million. Here are the details from Fiona Morrison. The Civil Defense Commission and the Chinese Embassy in Guyana on Thursday hosted a simple ceremony to mark the donation of El Nino preparedness and response resources from the government of China to Guyana. Director General of the CDC, Nasrul Hussein, explained that the organization has a responsibility to assist persons and communities that are vulnerable during this prolonged dry season. It's affecting our water resources, so we're having more, um, the dry weather is affecting agriculture in terms of crops, livestock, we're having more incidents of wildfires, forest fires. And we are asking people to be careful about how they set fires. We are also have, um, have, it's also affecting our electricity supply because more people are using air conditioners, and uh, we have other impact with regards to the, our water resources. The GWR are having challenges because people are using water um, that they would normally use from rainfall to do um, normal household work. So, despite all these challenges. Our job here is to alleviate vulnerable situations. China offered U.S. $100,000, equivalent to some $20 million 
Guyana dollars for disaster prevention and mitigation. The funds were provided following a commitment made by the Assistant Foreign Minister of China to Caribbean countries at a CARICOM meeting this year in Trinidad. The funds were used to purchase a number of items including water tanks, water dispensers, and fire extinguishers, which will be distributed to vulnerable locations. Chinese Ambassador to Guyana Gu Haiyan said China will continue to support Caribbean countries, including Guyana, in the area of disaster prevention and mitigation. This uh, prolonged uh, dry season indicates that climate change is a severe challenge that all people are facing. So it's urgent for us to stand together, to work together, to address it. Climate change, disaster prevention and mitigation are very important areas of cooperation between China and, and Guyana. Uh, in their third uh, Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation, which was held short, uh, recently in Beijing, our President uh, Xi Jinping announced that China would like to strengthen uh, multilateral cooperation um, platforms for disaster uh, reduction. So under the framework of China, Guyana, China, Caribbean, China, LAC, uh, cooperation. China is willing to deepen our cooperation in uh, 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 this uh, disaster, uh, in uh, climate uh, security and uh, disaster prevention and poverty alleviation uh, to ensure, uh, to enhance our friendship and the well-being of the people of the two countries. We uh, sincerely hope that our assistance could help some, some, some people um, to uh, overcome the difficulties uh, of this, uh, in this dry season. Drought in Guyana began in July this year and is forecasted to last until the first quarter of 2024. Coming up, quarantine man gets two life sentences for killing hotelier, watchman in 2019, and duo sentenced to 30 years each for killing fellow inmates. Are you looking for men's suits for that wedding, prom, or special party? Or maybe you need to update your wardrobe with a modern fit or a new color for work. Search no more, because John Lewis Styles is the perfect men's suit store. Come see us on Waterloo Street, and our friendly staff will help you choose the perfect size, color, and fit. Complement that suit with a stunning shirt and tie, matching bow tie and suspenders, cufflinks, or even a pair of shiny dress shoes. You will love the way you look. John Lewis Styles, Simply different. Your child needs nutrients every day. Enfagro has DHA and iron, which supports your child's mental development. Enfagro has components which cow's milk does not contain. Support your toddler's growth and complement their diet with Enfagro. Let's fuel the wonder. Complete control of power is in your hands with the ultimate U.S. brand Generac generators from Sylvie's Variety Store. Get the supply and reliability you need every time. From 1,800 to 8,000 watts of power for residential and commercial use. Recoil and electric start with gasoline engines. Generac generators from the authorized dealer's Sylvie's Variety Store. Transitions Light Intelligent Lenses. Pick your color. Choose your style. Available at Optique Vision Care. Every day, we are surrounded by data. Data flows everywhere. In a world driven by data, the Bureau of Statistics has an important role to play as the agency responsible for data collection and analysis. We collect data from every corner of the country to save lives through advanced medical research, empower the next generation with knowledge,
revolutionize agriculture for a sustainable future and ensure food security, make cities smarter, safer, and more efficient, help businesses make informed decisions, preserve our ecosystems through environmental monitoring, keep us safe with advanced security systems, even guiding the crafting of policies to benefit us all. But the real magic happens when we analyze this data and generate statistics, fueling innovation and discovery, ultimately unlocking the true power and potential of data and statistics. Join the Bureau of Statistics as we harness the power of data for the benefit of all. Data has the potential to make an enormous impact on our lives and the lives of future generations. Embrace the power of data and shape the future. Bureau of Statistics, serving Guyana's data needs. Your child needs nutrients every day. Enfagro has DHA and iron, which supports your child's mental development. Enfagro has components which cow's milk does not contain. Support your toddler's growth and complement their diet with Enfagro. Let's fuel the wonder. Welcome back. You're watching the Evening News. Four suspects remain in police custody as investigations continue into the Tuesday afternoon murder of Amit Singh, the son of a popular Camelville, Georgetown businessman. Singh was murdered at a house on Middle Road, La Penitence, Georgetown. Among the suspects is Yogendra Sukdio, the victim's close friend and business associate, who is said to be the mastermind behind the murder. The other three suspects are Sukdio's employees who have since denied involvement in the crime. Crime Chief Wendell Blanham told the Evening News that police are still trying to verify their respective stories and alibis. Police had reported that the victim was lured to the house under the pretext that a group of men had gold for sale. While at the house, four perpetrators brutally murdered the victim after which they wrapped his body in a sheet. The perpetrators then locked the building, leaving the victim's body inside, and fled the scene, taking with them the cash the victim had taken to purchase the gold. Based on intelligence received, ranks from the Criminal Investigations Department arrested Sugdio, who has since confessed to the crime and has led police to his house at Diamond, East Bank Demerara, where the stolen $7.7 .7 million was stashed. We now tell you that a quarantine farmer was today sentenced to life imprisonment without parole for two murders which occurred in 2019. Our Barbies correspondent Andrew Carmichael reports that while the convict's accomplice had earlier pleaded guilty to the less account of manslaughter and had received a four-year sentence, the farmer is to remain in prison for the rest of his life. Alvin Durant, a quarantine farmer who pleaded guilty to killing a Canadian hoteler and his worker back in 2019, has been slapped with two life sentences for the murders. The sentences were handed down by Justice Sandil Kisun, who is presiding over the Burbies Criminal Assizes. Durant, 49, also known as Alvin Bola and Blacker, of number 65 Village Quarantine Burbies, had appeared before Justice Kisun and pled guilty to the two counts of murder. He admitted to killing Harry Prashad, a security guard, and a 71-year-old Bavakanan Bridge Bassi who owned the hotel. State Prosecutor Attorney at Law Muntas Ali said the murders were committed at the Sunsplash Hotel, number 63 Village Quarantine between December 19 and 27, 2019. Ali told the court that the murders were for money as the brother of the hotel had hired Durant to kill Bridge Bassi. The body of Bridge Bassi, who arrived in Guyana on December 16, 2019, was found with two toes of his left foot severed, and Prashad was found with both hands tied behind his back onto a post on the balcony, and his left foot was severed at the ankle. The men had been tortured before being killed. Durant, in his statement, said he was promised $1 million but only received $100,000. In June of this year, a man who was a juvenile when he killed Bridge Bassi and Prashad was sentenced to serve four years in custody after pleading guilty to the lesser count of manslaughter. This is in addition to a series of rehabilitated orders imposed by a judge. 
In handing down sentence to Durant on Thursday, Justice Kisun pointed out that there were no mitigating factors arising from the crime, as he mentioned the brutal manner in which both murders were committed. A post-mortem report on the body of Avikadan Bridge Bassi by government pathologist Dr. Nihal Singh, which the judge referred to, stated that death was as a result of shock and hemorrhage due to multiple injuries. In mentioning some of the injuries, Justice Kisun said he suffered a fracture to the right ankle, also his right knee and both arms. There were also fractures to his jaw and more than one rib. There were missing fingers from his body and according to the pathologist, they were suffered with the victim still alive. Justice Kisun pointed out that, from the evidence, it is clear that both victims were tortured as the killer tried to get information as to where money and documents were. As it relates to Pashad, there were fractures to several parts of his body. His left foot was missing and cut off while he was still alive. His face was flattened and his brain reduced a state of liquidity. A shotgun, wood and cutlass were used in killing the hoteler and security guard. The judge urged the police to make arrangements to have a third person who has been implicated in the murder arrested and extradited to Guyana to stand a trial. Durant was represented by attorney at law Soraya Sabsuk. For the evening news, Andrew Carmichael. Meanwhile, two men were today each sentenced to 30 years jail for their involvement in the killing of a fellow inmate of the New Amsterdam prison back in 2017. Andrew Carmichael joins us again with that story. The two men, 25-year-old Dillon Boucher, formerly of Haslington East Coast Demerara, and 23-year-old Ramchand Latchman of No. 65 Village Quarantine, were found guilty of killing 27-year-old Nishan Jack Mohan on June 21, 2017. Jack Mohan, who was at the time an inmate of the New Amsterdam prison, was killed during an attack by three inmates at the facility. In 2020, Ruplal Ibrahim, formerly of Lot 4 Bat Settlement, West Coast Burbies, who had testified on behalf of the state against Boucher and Latchman during their trial, had pleaded guilty to the lesser offense of manslaughter in relation to the death of Jack Mohan. He was sentenced to 17 years in prison. Both Nishan Jagmohan, a keen harvest of Hampshire squatting area, and his older brother, Ramnarain Jagmohan, formerly of Belvedere squatting area, had been remanded on murder charges in connection with the death of Devendra Diodat, a 34-year-old businessman of Hampshire squatting area, on October 2013. Ramnarain was eventually freed of the crime in 2019 after the trial judge upheld a no-case submission made on his behalf by his attorney at law. On June 21, 2017, after appearing in court, the brothers went back to their cell in the New Amsterdam jail where they were attacked by inmates armed with homemade weapons. On Thursday, the trial judge, Sandil Kassoon, pointed to the post-mortem report which indicated that there were 26 wounds to the body. The trio had armed themselves with an improvised cutlass and knives as they attacked the brothers. Ramnarain was the first to be attacked and received a chop to his head. The three attackers then turned their attention to Nishan, who was in the washroom, and according to the judge, he was unarmed and helpless. He received wounds to his neck, chest, and both hands as he tried to bar off some of the attacks. During the trial, the jury heard of how the prisoners calculated the timing to ensure that the Jack Mohan brothers would have been alone in the area after returning from court and had gone to the washroom area before being placed in their cell. The judge pointed to the fact that Boucher is a repeat offender while noting the violent and vicious nature of the murder. Meanwhile, in a victim impact statement, mother of the deceased, Pamela Jack Mohan said she was very hurt. The woman told the court that since the incident which resulted in her son's demise, she has suffered a nervous breakdown and cannot sleep unless she's on medication. Both men said they were sorry for what happened, but maintained their innocence. Justice Kisun said each of them will spend 30 years in prison and will not be eligible for an early parole. For the evening news, Andrew Carmichael. Skills shortage in the cybersecurity industry has led US-based Fortinet, a global leader in the field, to offer workshops locally to businesses to upskill their IT capabilities. More in this Rupert Sinarine report. During the technology conference organized by the Ghana Manufacturing and Services Association on Thursday, Regional Account Manager for Fortinet, Bagwood Prasad, spoke on the skill shortages in the cybersecurity industry. 
Fortinet has made a commitment to train 1 million people globally by 2026. Technical workshops have been facilitated in Guyana to equip businesses with tools to employ proper cybersecurity mechanisms. Headquartered in the United States, Fortinet is a leader in cybersecurity and networking innovation with over 13,000 employees in several countries. Their networking solutions are most deployed, most patented, and amongst the most validated in the industry. In the cybersecurity industry, you know, Fortinet has made a commitment to closing the skill gap by supporting organizations through this challenging period of skill shortages by pledging to have tra train 1 million people by 2026. And we are on, the way, on our way to achieve that before that time. Now, in terms of Guyana, what we have been doing in Guyana is we've been training, doing technical workshop specifically focus on cybersecurity for business enterprise and small business as well. Fortinet has inked an agreement with the College of Science and Technology in Trinidad and Tobago, where the training platform will be provided to young professionals in cybersecurity. Bagwood said the intention is to collaborate with institutions in Guyana as well. Guyana is on the rise, and we also need and looking forward to work with institutions in Guyana to utilize our Fortinet Academy to contribute to the training and development of professionals in cybersecurity. The Organization of American States, OAS, has joined in condemning Venezuela's recent proposed referendum which seeks its population's approval to seize Guyana's Estequibo region. Find out more in this final Manic Chan report. The Organization of American States on Wednesday expressed support of the recent statement issued by the Caribbean community in relation to Venezuela's proposed referendum. OAS Secretary General Luis Almagro in a tweet said, quote, We condemn any act that constitutes a breach of peace and an attempt to encroach on a country's sovereign borders. This is an irrefutable violation of Guyana's territorial rights, and we support CARICOM's statement, end quote. Earlier on Wednesday, CARICOM made it clear that the decision of the Venezuela National Assembly to conduct a popular referendum on defending Venezuela's claim of the Essequibo has no validity in international law. The regional body took note of the fact that two of the questions approved to be posed in the referendum, if answered in the affirmative when the referendum is held on December 3, 2023, would authorize Venezuela to embark on the annexation of territory which constitutes part of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana and to create a state within Venezuela known as Guyana Essequibo. As such, it expressed Quote, CARICOM reaffirms that international law strictly prohibits the government of one state from unilaterally seizing, annexing, or incorporating the territory of another state. End quote. CARICOM added, an affirmative vote, as aforesaid, opens the door to the possible violation of this fundamental tenet of international law. It is to be emphasized that the land and water in question the Essequibo region of Guyana comprises more than two-thirds of the whole of Guyana itself. End quote. While CARICOM recognizes that the language of the two questions approved in the referendum speaks to the use of force or war, it reminded Venezuela of the long-standing position of Latin American and Caribbean countries, including Venezuela, that the region must remain a zone of peace. CARICOM also reaffirmed its support for the border controversy between the two countries to be settled via the judicial process currently before the International Court of Justice. Guyana has approached the World Court seeking a final ruling that the 1899 Arbitral Award is valid and binding. Reporting for the Evening News, Vanu Manakchand. And now for a look at the bridge reports. 
The Demerara Harbor Bridge is scheduled to be closed on Friday, October 27th at 3.30 hours for a period of one and a half hours. Meanwhile, the Barbies River Bridge is scheduled to be closed on Friday, October 27th at 15.05 hours for a period of one and a half hours. 61st National School Cycling, Swimming, Track and Field Championships launched and Lady Jags Needle Suriname in CONCACAF Qualifier. Details of these stories and more in the sportscast sponsored by McCorp coming up on the other side of the break. Looking to bring your dream home to reality? Or simply taking on a home improvement project? Then National Hardware Limited is where you should start. Let us put that touch to your home. Choose from over 1000 Berger Paint Original Hues for any surface. We are known for our trusted brands such as Westinghouse, Philips, Satco, Rubbermaid, Pyrex, Gibson Home and so much more. National Hardware Limited, your do it best store. Located in downtown Georgetown and industrial site Rhineville. Your child needs nutrients every day. Enfagro has DHA and iron which supports your child's mental development. Enfagro has components which cow's milk does not contain. Support your toddler's growth and complement their diet with Enfagro. Let's fuel the wonder. Every day we are surrounded by data. Data flows everywhere. In a world driven by data, the Bureau of Statistics has an important role to play as the agency responsible for data collection and analysis. We collect data from every corner of the country to save lives through advanced medical research, empower the next generation with knowledge, revolutionize agriculture for a sustainable future and ensure food security, make cities smarter, safer, and more efficient, help businesses make informed decisions, preserve our ecosystems through environmental monitoring, keep us safe with advanced security systems, even guiding the crafting of policies to benefit us all. But the real magic happens when we analyze this data and generate statistics, fueling innovation and discovery, ultimately unlocking the true power and potential of data and statistics. Join the Bureau of Statistics as we harness the power of data for the benefit of all. Data has the potential to make an enormous impact on our lives and the lives of future generations. Embrace the power of data and shape the future. Bureau of Statistics, serving Guyana's data need. Super bet, your best bet. Do you wish to pass some time and win while doing so? Play our Super Bet online games. Choose from over 200 online games that are easy to play. Visit www.superbet.gy to choose your game. Must be 18 years and older. Terms and conditions apply. Play responsibly. Your child needs nutrients every day. Enfagro has DHA and iron, which supports your child's mental development. Enfagro has components which cow's milk does not contain. Support your toddler's growth and complement their diet with Enfagro.